Francis Dickens. And how old are you? Ninety-two. <coughs> well, uh, are you going to tell us about your life, your early life? Yes. All right. Um, I was born in Wexford County and <coughs> started the school. My three sisters, two sisters and I, September 1st, 1889, in the log schoolhouse with wooden benches for seats and wooden tables for our books and the usual tin pail and dipper. Our school, mm -hmm. our school only went to the sixth grade. And um, if you uh, passed that, you could go to Sherman School, which was five miles away. But in all the years, uh, uh, 20, uh, the 25 children, I never knew of one of them going to town school but me. And I worked for my board. I only got in half a year as I was taken with a fever at Christmas time and I wouldn't go back after that. I didn't want to get behind my cat. And uh, I stayed home helping mother till I was 13 years old. Then I went to work for Mrs. Bradford in town. The, her husband owned the meat market. They had a big two-story house with a basement and five heating stoves in it in the winter. And uh, one upstairs, two down in the living room, one in the basement, and one in what they called the slope. So it uh, seemed to me I didn't have time to do much else, only just carry wood and carry out ashes and clean the lamps. We had several lamps to fill and wash and trim every morning. I uh, see, I learned to cook and sew and keep house there. Every fall, Jenny Bullion, a dressmaker, would come and stay three months and sew for Mrs. Bradford and her daughter and some of the ladies in town. And she taught me how to uh, cut out dresses, cut out patterns for dresses. You couldn't buy patterns then. So uh, in the afternoon, I always helped her sew and press. And uh, it's been a big help to me all these years. What I learned in that five years I was there. <coughs> I stayed there till I was married to Frank Dickinson in 1903. He was an engineer at the Ann Arbor car shop. No, no, what you going to do with that? <laughs> he was an <laughs> engineer at the um, broom handle factory. And um, he worked seven days a week, 12 hours a day for $10.75 a week. But we managed, we bought an acre of land with a three-room house and a good well on it. And we lived there five years. Then the timber was gone for broom handles, so they, we had to go elsewhere, so we loaded our furniture, we sold the house, we loaded our furniture, stuff on the Annenberg freight car, and went to Wasso to live, where Dick got a job as engineer in the car shops. And, but it was the same old thing, 12 hours a day, 
seven days a week, but he got $25 a week there. And they didn't pay by check. Every two weeks, he got a check, um, envelope with two um, gold, $20 gold pieces in them and one $10 bill. And my, we, I used to try to save one of those 20s every payday, but it didn't always work out. Nor did the job last always. We, <coughs> he was there six years. Then the car shops moved to Zooland. And he went to work for the Triangle Truck Company uh, in the Wazo, building uh, car motor, er, truck motor. That only lasted a year. And they moved to Lansing. So Dick saw an ad in the paper for Mr. Cantwell who wanted a mechanic to uh, who could uh, run a lathe, do, and, uh, and repair cars. So we moved to Chesney and the roads in them days, no pavement. And it had rained and rained. We went there the 15th of May and the road was just mud. It took 12 hours to get our goods from Owasso to Chesney with a team of horses. I don't know how many times we got stuck. Well, I lived in two different houses. Houses were scarce in Chesney at that time for Korean and not too good. So I lived in two different ones. And in the spring, I moved over by Mabel Babians across from her by the opera house and, and I had there was one drawback for me from Owasso that we didn't have any lights after midnight and we didn't have water. You had to carry water. I had to carry water from Newman's where the Newman store is now up to where Mabel Babian lives. All, all uphill in the sand wasn't even the wall. <laughs> but we had awfully good times. There were so many things going on at the opera house, skate, roller skating and nice parties. They had parties where they'd have an orchestra from Flint and one from a Warsaw in the old opera house. And such nice dances and parties. I joined the star and the Maccabees and uh, all those and uh, the Maccabees we used to put on a home talent show every year and that was a big drawing card and made money. We'd take it to St. Charles and to Brand and uh, Mr. Campbell owned the opera house and the store where um, Bert and Joe are, are and where the where um, and uh, a, the biggest house in Chesney in his machine shop in the park and. Dick always had things to do if he wasn't busy in the garage or things, or there was always something in somewhere that he had to do. So he had to work seven days a week there. I don't remember how much he got anymore. It's <laughs> probably 25. <laughs> uh, well... I guess I just got to spend all of it, did um, Well, you've got yourself to testing, all right. Tell us how you, when you started taking teachers. <coughs> oh, 
how long, when did you start taking teachers to board? Or when did you start boarding? Or uh, serving meals? You served meals quite a while, didn't you? Oh, 50 years. Uh -huh. How did you get started in that? Well, after, um, I've never mentioned Beatrice or having a youngster here in any way. And, uh, but uh, they, uh, I started uh, having teachers when we they started going to college. And I didn't do much the first few years. I've been chastening all my soul. And they helped with the garage. But I started in taking teachers to board and room in 1922. I lived in a rest home and started. What is now the rest home? What is now the rest home and uh, teachers. Uh, I don't know. I never, how I come to start, they just come and ask me if I'd board of Doris Davis and they were boarding Miss Richmond's and they got to start down. <laughs> I'm come up my house. Well, of course, there weren't any restaurants to speak of No, then. no, mm -hmm. not even a bakery. Oh, there wasn't even a bakery, huh? Not when we come to Chesney. So, um, I started taking teachers in 1922 when Beatrice went away from home, and I had teachers steady for 50 years. Now, when you say you boarded them, does that just mean meals? Board, I boarded and roomed them both. I boarded and roomed them both. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the time, t for years, till, uh, oh, I, till I moved in that house I'm in now. And then you just boarded a few, didn't I you? I just boarded Norwin and Robert, and uh, that was all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, did you sew? Have you sewn all the time you were married? Yeah. For I, other people, I mean. I, I used to sew. I wanted to put that in there. When I was in music, I used to sew for 25 cents a day, all day long. And if I didn't get anything quite finished, I'd stay and work till it was done, something I had to have. Oh. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I work all the There's something I wanted to well, put, just put it right in. You just I uh, worked, when I worked uh, out for Mrs. Bradford, I got a dollar and a half a week and worked from 4 o'clock in the morning till the work was done at night. Dollar and a half a week. Well, you did get one good thing out of that. You did learn how to sew, didn't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I... Um, at 13 years old, I wasn't too much of a cook. No. And I learned to cook and to can and to do everything. So really... Um, so I figure I got quite an education out of that. And she must have been a good housekeeper. Well, Mrs. Bradford? Yes. No. She was... <coughs> uh, I didn't see her for the first three months I were there. She had ulcers in her stomach, bleeding ulcers. Well, who taught you all this then? The daughter. Oh, her daughter. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she must have been a good yeah. housekeeper then, because uh, you are such a good housekeeper. Well, Richard Bradford, I suppose, was a good housekeeper, but she never saw well day. You know, uh, she used to... Uh, when she was able to be up around and I was working, uh, like wash and iron and, and working hard, she'd come out in the kitchen and make tea and maybe bake some biscuit and get some jam out and <laughs> make me stop and I'd be in such a hurry to get done. I didn't want to stop to get eat, but I had to sit down right there and eat. She was a wonderful woman. She probably thought you'd worked long enough. Yeah, and in the afternoon, no scrubbing, no cleaning. If I had the floor half done, I didn't finish it. You get your apron on, and Jenny was there, go in and help Jenny, or come in and crochet, or I used to do the mending, and uh, 
paper, make aprons, and we had to make all our own sheets and pillowcases, you know, and even you couldn't buy a towel right to make a towel. No, no you couldn't when I was it's young either. And we made so our own towels. I had done all that, mm-hmm. clean sewing. And but that was easier than scrubbing. It was a rest, in a way. Oh, yeah. I yeah. loved to do it. Mm-hmm. And she was particular about... I used to have to wear those princess aprons with the ruffles to the ruffle over the shoulder and <laughs> round the neck. And you, you always had to look nice. Well, that's good. So, mm-hmm. Well, you certainly have had an interesting life, haven't you? Yeah. It, uh, it's been, I think I got a good start for early course in all the years of Miss Le- I knew Mrs. Bradford, and as sick as she was, she always could make a joke and uh, laugh about things, and nothing was ever wrong. Well, that's wonderful. And uh, when I went there to work, someone told her, I said, you just can't get along with her, she's awful sassy. So I told her about you? Yeah. And I never, oh, I guess I was there a year or more, till one hot day, oh, it was so hot, and I wanted to finish the iron in forenoon. And I had my dinner all planned. And Mrs. Bradford, from out in the kitchen, she said, Frank, she said, uh, would you scrub off of a few of them new potatoes? And uh, put them in the oven, she said. She says, bread. And Mr. Bradford just loved new potatoes baked. I said, what? Baked new potatoes? I never heard of such a thing. <laughs> so I scrubbed off a potato peas and put in the oven. Well, Fred come in early to eat because he always come where I... She had a son, Fred Sprague, and a daughter, Fanny, and uh, she, she <laughs> I just scrubbed a potato piece of forest, right? Men ate all the potatoes. <laughs> and she laughed, she never got over laughing about how mad I got. I, I didn't, that's all I said. I never heard of such a thing, but I scrubbed a potato. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny all those things you'll remember for <laughs> years and years, my gosh. <laughs> and they were so good to me. Well, they must have been a nice family to work for. Uh, you you done your work, and she never complained about my work. She never did. Well, you probably did it well. Well, now... Um, how many years do you think you've been sewing then? Oh, I've been sewing ever since I was 13 years old and 73. Or no, 93. You're, you're 92 almost. 92, yeah. You're not going to be 92 till August. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, August is just a breath away. Yes, I know. August is just yeah, a breath away. Well, I started in when I was there, But I sold some at home. I, I That's learned. almost 60 years, though, isn't it, of sewing? Oh, it's more than that. Uh-huh, and you're still sewing. Yeah. Well, there was one more thing I wanted to ask you, and I've forgotten what it was. It wasn't anything very important, I guess. But, oh, I know. Now, you said when you came to Chesney, you helped in the, you helped in the shop. Now, how did you help in the shop? Uh, help uh, in the shop? Mm-hmm. Oh, with the writing letters and the books and things like that. Mm-hmm. Secretarial uh, work. Yeah, making, um, yeah, uh, I wasn't many secretary, although now after Dick had the garage, I kept books and everything. Mm-hmm. It was my sixth grade education, would you think I ever, ever, ever could do it? Sure. Mm-hmm. You learned as you went along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like to tell us when your daughter was born. I, oh, oh uh, 
she was born in uh, Meade. And uh, when was that? Oh, in the, oh, she was born in 1904, oh. October 1904. In other words, she was born before you went to Owasso. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there was another interesting thing you mentioned. Helen, you mentioned that you carried water from where Newman's uh, jewelry store is when you came to Chesney. Uh, was there a pump there? Yeah, there was a pump on the corner there. And, and how many people use that pump? Oh, some of the stores and Ch Chapman's store and uh, Mabel Babian had water, but uh, I didn't carry water from there. And, uh, oh, there wasn't many people living around there, you know, right? Just the stores and... Oh, that and part of town did not have very many houses? Oh, no, no. Oh, I no. see. Mm -hmm. There was uh, houses, the Martin house was down there, Frank Martin's house, and the old Jackson house, but they all had wells. But this was kind of a uh, community pump there on the corner. Uh, well, this has really been very interesting, Mrs. Dick.